Well, welcome to the last installment of our planes and movements videos. And uh, the last plane we're going to look at is the transverse plane. Now, the transverse plane divides me uh, this way. It would divide me into superior and inferior halves or, or proximal and distal halves if you're talking about the limbs. So uh, the transverse plane is, is that. So if I was to do a movement in that plane, I would be, you know, able to kind of turn around or do a pirouette or twist, right? That sort of thing. That's movement in the transverse plane, if I was going to stay in that plane and move. So here are a few movements in the transverse plane. We have a few, and uh, we have, first of all, rotation. Rotation is pivoting around one single axis and we're really looking at the torso of the body because we'll look at some special uh, ways to rotate our arms uh, and legs but rotation is really looking at uh, at the at the spine so rotate pure rotation would be twisting at the spine at, at uh, the lower back if I was to uh, rotate at like the cervical vertebra that would be at my neck and this is pure rotation this way okay so that's that's really rotation now we have internal or medial rotation so this is where we get into our arms and legs because we can go in towards the midline with our rotation or out away from the midline with our rotation then we talk about these special ways so here's internal rotation if I was to internally rotate at the shoulder, it would look like this. So that's rotating at the shoulder, but it's internally rotating. Okay. If I was to internally or medially rotate at the hip, it would look like this. All right. So that's medial or internal rotation, shoulder, hip. Um, you know, especially if you're, if you're flexing at the elbow and then you in, uh, internally or medial ro rotate at the shoulder, it gets pretty obvious. The opposite is external rotation or lateral rotation. So at the shoulder, it would look something like this. At the hip, it would look something like this. Okay, so it's rotation, but it has a direction to it. So really, we're looking at our, our shoulder and our hip for uh, internal, external, or medial and lateral rotation. Okay. All right, uh, let's talk about pronation and supination. This is a special rotation that really only occurs at the elbow. You've got your, your radius and you've got your uh, ulna, these two bones in your forearm. And they're kind of unique in the body in that they rotate over each other. Um, and it's such a special thing that we call it supination and pronation. Okay, So pronation is turning of the palm down. So I just pronated there. So again, pronation is this movement. If I was to be in the anatomical position, pronation would look like this. Okay, so that turning of the palm either down or that turning of the palm posterior, that would be considered pronation. Supination then is the opposite. So supination is turning my palms up or what's proper in the anatomical position, having my, my palms be anterior, right? Turning my palms anterior. So this is supination. This is supination, okay? Supination. So how do you remember that? One little trick is remember, in order to soup, uh, hold a bowl of soup, you must supinate. So think if you're gonna hold a bowl, how would you hold a bowl of soup? Well, obviously there's only one way to do it without spilling like this so this is your supination okay and then the opposite would be your pronation so soup bowl of bowl of soup and supinate all right two more uh protraction and retraction 
Protraction and retraction uh, like really occur the most at the uh, shoulder. So when we protract at the shoulder, we're gonna turn our shoulders in like this. We're gonna kind of hunch our shoulders in. So protraction occurs when I kind of hunch my shoulders in this way, I protract. I could protract at uh, the jaw too if I stuck it straight out, that would be protraction. Retraction is uh, the opposite. So at my shoulders, it's pulling my shoulders back. That's retracting at the shoulder blades, really squeezing your two scapulae together would be retraction there at the, at the shoulder. Uh, I could retract at my jaw too if I stuck it out and pulled it back in. Retract at the jaw, not too common a movement. Mo most often gonna occur there at the shoulder. So protraction and then retraction. Then we have a couple of special movements. So these are special movements because they exist in more than one plane. Circumduction is a movement that occurs in all three planes. So circumduction is when we turn a limb or a joint in basically all three planes. So one of the most obvious ones is at the shoulder. So if I circumduct at the shoulder, I'm going to make a circle with my shoulder. Maybe you've done this in gym class. Your teachers told you to make arm circles. This is really circumduction, okay? This is not rotation, okay? Rotation would be internally or externally rotating that way. But circumduction looks like this. And if you can see it, you, you really know it exists in all three planes. I can circumduct at the, at the neck. I can circumduct at the hip. I can circumduct at the finger. This is the, 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 the party one. So circumduction is that making a circle with uh, a, a body part and it exists in all three planes. Opposition reposition is a special movement that just occurs at the thumb and it occurs in, in two planes. Uh, but really um, opposition is just taking my thumb and, and pointing it to my pinky finger. Okay, that's opposition. And then reposition is just this movement of it going back. So opposition and then reposition at the thumb. We really only use it when we grip, uh, which is an important thing to be able to do, um, but we, we use it for, for, for gripping purposes. So opposition, reposition only occurs at the thumb, at the, that special joint called the saddle joint, which we'll, we'll look at later. Anyways, those are the movements of the transverse plane and make sure that you do all of these movements. Don't just learn them in your head. Um, if you're anything like me, you're more of a kinesthetic learner and you will learn better when you actually perform the movement. Um, if you have somebody at home, have them play Simon Says with you, right? Simon Says circumduct at the shoulder, right? And you'll do this sort of motion. Simon says, uh, flex at the elbow and you'll do this kind of motion, right? So move, play with it, have fun with it. The point is to understand how your body moves. And then later on in this unit, we'll learn which muscles cause these movements to occur. All right. Thanks for watching. Keep learning.